We are Edge of Paradise. And, and you're, you're watching, watching The Red Booth. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Red Booth Show. I'm your host, Kimberly Q. And on tonight's episode, I have an awesome rock band called Edge of Paradise. Come and join us. So, hey, guys. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having us. I think it'd be cool to introduce all of you one at a time. So why don't we start from this side and go ahead and tell everybody who you are. My name's Dave, and uh, glad to be here. <laughs> he and plays you, guitar. And he plays guitar. And I'm Margarita Monet. I'm the singer. Cool. I'm David, and I also play guitar. My name is Vanya Kapetanovic. Play bass. <laughs> and nice. we have Jimmy Lee, who is our drummer. And he didn't fit. I'm kidding. He didn't fit in the booth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where did he go? Why isn't he going to come and fit in the booth? I know, he had to <laughs> run off. But. Oh, all right. Well, okay. Well, here we are. Yeah. And I'm really excited to have you guys on the show. Um, especially because you have a. Um, one of the things that I really love about this is you're a female vocalist and a rock singer. Cool. And so you are pretty, pretty awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How did you guys start the band in the first place? We started in, um, well, I met Dave, and Dave was in a band with Robin McCauley, and he had Greg Bissnett and Tony Franklin, and then those Bjorn. guys, yeah, Bjorn. And then uh, Robin went on tour with Survivor, so Dave was looking for a singer. And uh, we got um, hired to work on a project, and that's kind of how our paths crossed. And then uh, we had similar visions, and we worked great together, so we just decided to start our own band, and that's how everything began. Yep. Wow. Yeah. What kind of project did you guys start? Uh, you were oh, hired God, on? they don't want to talk about it. Like oh, okay, fine. <laughs> no, yeah, it was, it was like a pop rock song. I mean, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> like History. They wanted, it was like... Led Zeppelin-ish wannabe kind of, but not produced well. Oh, that's one of the things that I that it really makes a difference. Is like you have your song and how it how it gets produced is really right, makes yeah. such a big difference, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, huge. I mean, because I never really thought I would be in a band, so because I'm a pianist, so I was wow. I kind of played the song on the piano. That's like my thing. You're, that's and so then... that's so like proper and conservative. But then here you are, like <laughs> yeah, totally right. Rocking that's out. my whole history is classical piano. So. And most of the stuff in the songs yeah. were, I think, uh, pianos and keyboards and stuff. That yeah. she's playing that actually so, on the yeah, album. yeah, yeah. So cool. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, but you know, I feel like that really helps with songwriting with us too. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, I played you know piano on that song and. It was just a different thing from what we wanted to do eventually, so we just made, made our own band. Yeah. That. Awesome. We How long ago off. was that? Seven years? Yeah, six or seven years ago. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys decided to start the band, yeah. and was it called Edge of Paradise? Yes, right away. Yeah. From the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Okay, nice. What was the um, inspiration for that? I think living in L.A. because it's kind of like a false paradise in a way, and everybody lives on the edge because you know, it's easy to yeah, fall off, edge, yeah. right? You live on the edge. If you live in LA, I think you can relate. You know what? Oh, I live in the cool. center of the paradise, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know we're close the edge. No, you're by the edge. I've seen you. Yeah, he you're is right on, on the edge. edge. You're yeah. sitting on the edge. I'm most... He's about to fall off the edge. Okay. I'm literally sitting on the edge. <laughs> well, and so go ahead and tell everybody what uh, So I didn't uh, join the band till a little over a year. Yeah. Now, right? I've been mm -hmm. in the yeah. band for a little over a year. That was Dave number two. Dave number two. That's right. Um, There's two Daves. Yeah. So. yeah, but I knew the band before that. Um, our previous bass player, Nick, I uh, used to be in the band, and I was friends with him and kind of always went to their shows and yeah. became friends with them, and eventually it just they needed a, a second guitarist, or they, they yep. decided to add a second guitar, and I was kind of there and uh, it all made sense. And so there wasn't two guitars before him? No, no. and you know, at first, because he, I guess, covers a lot of ground and we were like, well, we don't want it to be messy. But then after, we're like, how could we have gone without him? Yeah, because you know? we put a lot so. of layers on the CD too. So in order to make it as full, we definitely needed the right person. To There's never too many guitars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Keep adding them, yeah. keep but them coming. You know, when you yeah, add a member, it's so hard to <laughs> you know, find someone that fits the band, that, Personality you know, yeah, it's, yeah. You, everything has to mesh together, so, totally. yeah, we're very yeah. lucky, it's a good group of people. And how did you find him? How did you guys find each other? Just because you were, just you were a fan friends, of the band? Just through friends, mutual friends, and, uh, yeah. yeah, they're previous 
bass player. Uh, used to mm -hmm. be in the band, and I was his roommate, and he knew that I played, and we just kind of eventually, uh, when the right time was right, I think they decided they, they wanted to try out some guitar players, and I auditioned, and... We yeah, just, we had already just, talked to him, so yeah, we had it makes sense to, give him, yeah. to bring him in. Because yeah. we told him like a year before, and then right. uh, I just never followed through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But, but we, we knew each other. We, yeah. you know, he seems a little timid, and, I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> he seems a little timid, I don't think. Yeah. No, what was the thing Probably you said? Like, you, didn't want, you didn't want another like typical L.A. sort of... Well, he didn't yeah, want someone you know, else musician. to come solo over a song. Well, I wanted like, somebody to add. Because a lot of people add. just want to like solo over everything. Yeah, so they want to just do their own thing. So it has to add to the whole thing. You know? yeah. You're yeah. just like, okay, Because, okay, you know, we, we yeah. really wanted to messy. be the band, the music. We don't really care about our individual yeah, parts. Yeah, it's not about... We wanted you know, to all be together. In, in, in the rock bands, yeah. there's a lot of egos. <laughs> so yeah. you don't want somebody... <laughs> I don't know, Slash coming in selling half an inner one day or like that. I want somebody to blend in. You know what blending in means? Not being on top, meaning blending in. Yeah. yeah. But I think that was, yeah, that was the main issue. Having someone that was just going to be part make the of the sound it. as a whole mm -hmm. and not like want like to take the, over the show. Take over yeah. the spotlight yeah. or yeah. anything like that. And I think we're all similar in that way, so it works. You know, we all yeah. want the song to be good, so. Well, except for him. Well, I think, <laughs> but, but seriously, everybody realizes that's what's important here. Because yeah. if we don't have the songs in the right place, we're all gonna be wasting our time, so. Nobody wants to do that. Well, you guys do play very well together. And I'm super excited because we're gonna actually be showing you guys um, their live performance on the show, um, which is very exciting. And also, we should hear about how you got into the band. We found him in Iceland. Yeah. Was I was frozen. frozen. <laughs> I yeah. was in a lake rock. Listen, last yeah. thing I remember, yeah. I was hunting this pterodactyl and I hit him with a bow. Yeah. Fell, in, back. fell in the sea. I lost my memory. <laughs> then I see like people around me slowly getting, you know, yeah. coming Sorry, back to my senses. Off, yeah. I see these like long haired people. So I'm thinking, oh, I'm still in prehistoric period, right? Yeah. Because they look like cavemen. And then Ooh. I realized, oh, what is this device? You had a cell phone. We're just phone. filming a music video over there. <laughs> there so yeah. But so no, you know, like we were going through a change because our previous bass player had a baby, mm. and you know, we really, you know, with this band, we we're kind of looking forward to the future, and we need everything to just kind of. This you has know, to be priority have, one. Yeah. yeah so. so and you know, we started looking for bass players and then his video just kind of popped up on YouTube. And we're like, wow, he plays bass really good, but is he really playing bass? Yeah. Or is he just working out all the time and just like air bass? It's so funny to hear oh that. Oh my God. Because you know, like, I had an, sorry, we, at that we, time. We have to no. take a quick break, so you have to tell us the rest of the story <laughs> right when we come back, okay? I'm done. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, come back to the Red Bass Show in just a sec. And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. I'm here with the rock band Edge of Paradise. And we were just introducing all of the band members and talking about how you got into the band. And Vanya was telling us a bit of a story about what happened. So I know you found him on the internet yeah. and... I mean, he, uh, he doesn't tip look like a typical LA bass player, so... <laughs> but he plays amazing. We were like, wow. And then, yeah, and then we, we called, called him. him. And then he was like, I have to get in this band. And I'm like... Uh, I don't know. What, 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 yeah, he's like, I must get in this band. No. And I'm like, okay, well, that sounds good. But then I was thinking, he's really big. What if he doesn't play well, and then we have to tell him he's not going to be allowed in the band? And then he'll just beat you <laughs> up. He's going to be really no. mad. <laughs> so I'm thinking, shit, bands. Do we have, do, should we even have him come down? Because he's going to be mad. <laughs> but then he came down. So why did good, you like so the band like, so much? What was it that made you go? Oh, I didn't like them at all. I was just, <laughs> yeah. I was just, I was just, just like. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, it's right. almost like, why did you like me? No, you're like the only one who approached me. Yeah. <laughs> I know, we've all been there. It's, you know what, uh, let me tell you, um, I came to LA to be a musician, in, in, initially. From? And then I come from, from, I'm in some uh, very Another far part planet. of Eastern Europe, you wouldn't know. But anyway, I came from there, I came to LA. <laughs> It wasn't fun. It wasn't like I thought it's gonna be. It wasn't '80s anymore, <laughs> like in my country. <laughs> so I was like, "All right, I get. I guess that I don't know." I can you mean just... because of the rock scene? You're oh yeah, about the it rock has scene, been right. deceased by that at that point. And it also, you know, like don't say that, okay? Well, now we're, we're like we're like digging out the, 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 the leftovers, and we're like hit, like we're making Frankenstein. We're bringing it back. That's right. We're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. Like, please, don't don't don't. Uh, 
sabotage this because we all know that we are bringing it back. But the thing is, you know, it just so so. Uh, long story short, I lost uh, faith in music. So when I saw them, you know, days before, I was talking to my buddy, and I was like, you know, what would be cool. If there was a female fronted band with a really good like a Zach Wild almost riffs, like a heavy. So it's not like pop, uh, you know, lollipop metal, but it's kind of like still you know, perceivable as, as, as uh, mainstream. And mm -hmm. then she contacts me and the first song I play is Alive that you'll hear today. And I'm like, wow, that's actually exactly like what I was describing. Wow. So it picked my interest. It was really interesting. You my asked wife told for me, it and my it, wife told it, me it you appeared. Literally, yeah, she told yeah. me you literally like... Uh, that's how things that usually yourself. happen that yeah. work. So as me. soon as she contacted me, well, yeah. I was like, oh, I should start thinking more positive. Mm, I should have a million dollars by the this week. I don't know when I get That's, get that's, get how, that that's how we met. Yeah. That's how we met him. It all just happened because I was hired to play on her project. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, this seems like a good fit. She, she worked really hard. Too. So And she right. worked really hard. So I was like, well, that's what's important. So it's not somebody being a virtuoso right away and then I am a attitude. virtuoso but no but like on. somebody who's willing to work hard and put aside an ego and like put the time in because it takes vast yeah. amounts mm -hmm. of effort I feel though a little bit of, it's, it's of difficult a, it's kind of like a cheating for me because they already established 90% of it I just needed to come like a layer on top so they've been together for seven years I can't even imagine how much effort they had to put yeah. to bring it up to here the fourth studio album you know so f like Dave said I wish I was just joining like you like it's almost like done deal but for me it's like I want to contribute I want to help with mixing the recording like I want to be it's not like call me when there's you know booze and girls girls and shows no no like I want to be every single part of the step yeah. of the way and, and 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 that's what it is you know yeah. so maybe this band's gonna have 20 albums you know I know the first four they did and they did great but like he said he needed some sort of uh, reinforcement because not everybody was giving 100 percent which is you know life gets in the way yeah. and especially how rock is treated nowadays you don't get instant gratification so you nope. feel like well you know what like why would I keep I don't see like in, I'm looking at the bigger picture, that's what I'm trying to say, because I know currently, yeah, rock is not something you should get in if you want to make a quick buck, but like, yeah. that's not what we're in, so it doesn't matter, I just want to, and they're good people, to me that's the most important thing, I don't care how good you are in your instrument, if you're yeah. a bad person, yeah, that it's makes just it not going to work, because there's it's too much time to work together. You know what, yeah. also, with kind of timing worked so well, because we were, you know, working on the new album, and uh, with the direction of the sound we wanted, and, you know, to take the album, he brought a lot of he ideas has a similar that vision, kind yeah. of and so fit he's been what we were very trying good to part do. of the writing for the new so stuff. So he mm -hmm. did contribute, it's, like you know, on so the it's, it's come album. to a whole new level yeah. with all the new people. So it feels really good to kind of have everybody kind of you know working together. Mm -hmm. so. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's awesome because obviously you love this this style of music so much. You know, like you're very dedicated to this mm -hmm. genre, which is. I think it really shows. Space metal. Yeah. Space metal. I was going to say, what genre are we? Because yeah. I don't yeah, even know what There's a lot of sub, sub genres yeah. now. Like, I can't even really keep track of it. When I tell people, I don't know what genre are we, people think, oh my God, what are you? Like, what kind yeah. of crazy yeah. music? Yeah. It's not crazy, it's just that I think we're trying to, like, revive metal and give it some, like, modern sheen on top. So it's not like when you say, oh, my friend plays in a heavy metal band, what do you think first? Oh, some guy with long hair tattoos and cowboy boots and, like, people plays like Jimi Hendrix whatever some but the thing is I like she said space metal I want this to be like we all want yeah. this but Mad Max meets Robocop but we also want to be unique <laughs> to ourselves yeah. so, because that, first and foremost like I don't want to copy anything or go down a path that I think would be the easy road because there's not going to be that's nothing I could be proud of and since there's so much effort going into it we have to have something that's totally unique onto this yeah, own thing. Yeah, I feel like it's stand pretty its unique. Own, and so. also, like, because, uh, you know, with lyrics, too, I really want to put the messages I want to send in the songs. That's really, really important to me. And I feel like every song kind of has tells its own story and has a message. So I really want to, you know, like to focus on yeah, that. Yeah, so for, cool. for everybody out there who speaks English, listen to these lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I wish I note. understood those lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> We have to take another quick break, but we'll be right back with Edge of Paradise. And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. I'm here with the rock band Edge of Paradise. So, okay, so you were talking about the lyrics. Now, yes. you do you primarily write the lyrics for the for the songs, or do you all sort of contribute to that? I'll take the lyrics. Yeah, <laughs> you take the lyrics. Again. Okay. Well, it's um, I don't know. I guess because you know, melodies and lyrics for me is kind of hand in hand. And uh, I really put my heart and soul into the songs, and 
um, yeah, and also on stage as well. So I just kind of, you know, like to do my own lyrics and, uh, you know, to tell what I say, what I want to say, basically. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, and you had said that you come from a classical sort of piano background. How did you first get into music? Like, what was the beginning of your music like? Well, when I was three, my mom gave me to a piano class. <laughs> oh my God, three! <laughs> yeah, three wow. or four, and then. Um, yeah, we moved to Moscow because I was born in Armenia and then we moved to Moscow and my mom worked as an English teacher and um, it was like an arts academy. So first she gave me to like a theater, then dance, then piano. So I was kind of immersed in it and I just loved it instantly and I don't like I never thought I would be doing anything else. So um, yeah, and then piano was like a... Um, I guess in Russia, you know, it's very, very serious, very competitive. You have to like practice five hours a day. Like, Whoa. you know, you go to music school, you go to school, you go to ballet school. So it was like my did whole Did you do life. ballet too? I did ballet too. Wow, she's a ballerina yeah, rock so. star. That's yeah, very similar to... Yeah, yeah, just like you, uh, you Are you a ballerina? Pose, but didn't he, ballerina. Pose, he poses in front of the mirror five hours a day. <laughs> So that's like yeah, I'm similar. similar. I'm just yeah. flexing in the, in the ballerina outfit, which is even weirder. No, that's that's cool. I'm sure lots of people do. Yeah. Everybody's like, "How's my son? Like, How's my biceps in these songs?" Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, but you know, like everything I learned along the way, I think I kind of bring to this band in a way. So. Yeah. Well, definitely, and they're going to get to see you guys perform very soon coming up on the next segment. Sounds yeah. like fun. Um, and you guys do a lot of hair flipping, which is awesome. You know? <laughs> I'm just what? trying to well, get out of my face. We're all representing the like, hair, like there's yeah. the total rock to hair. You need yeah. any shampoos to advertise. Yeah. Yeah. Her hair is yeah. so long, she flipped it once some. and she wrapped it around my guitar. Remember that? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She That's happened orgulous. many times. That's <laughs> happened to mine. And then I'll get stuck. That's one of the dangers, you know, the common dangers of rock bands is if you're too close to each other yeah. Yeah. and your hair entangled. gets entangled yeah. into yeah. the guitar And I'm pretty strings. good at like made, being a matrix thing, you know, like getting out of the way when the bass starts flying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. when I start spinning like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so right, so uh, definitely they need conditioning sponsors. Yeah, we do. Conditioner yeah, that sponsors. That would be, that'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah, I want to have everything endorsed, like a, like a hair, oh, yeah, we're skin, about yeah. tape. tape. Yeah. Yeah. Now, don't you guys have a music video that's just coming out too? I think yeah, we're going to have two music videos. We have one that was shot in Iceland, and wow. it was sponsored by Souls of Rock Foundation. We were really lucky that they supported us. That's so cool! Yeah. Was Congratulations! Yeah, it was um, directed by Val Rossi, and uh, DP was there in Lafreni. We had it was just amazing how people came and yeah, helped it was a fun us. Trip, you know, yeah. so that video is going to come out um, pretty soon when our first single. Um, is out and but the part is we didn't have Vanya in it or Jimmy because we were going through the change we in the and transition, it was already yeah. kind of you know set up but we also have another music video coming up uh, so there's gonna be two yeah so the new one is gonna have the whole lineup awesome yeah. and what's the song that you're playing on that one that one is called universe so, so cool. <laughs> space rock. Yeah. Space, space metal. Rock. Space <laughs> Space metal. travel music, yeah. Space travel. Awesome. Yeah, if you feel like time traveling or space traveling, it's just perfect. To yeah. perfect soundtrack. <laughs> so what is the um, inspiration be behind the new music video that you just did? Like what's the In style? Iceland? No, the one that oh. you has everybody that has the whole band. Yeah, so that one, um, you know, the tagline is take me to forever. So just kind of, I guess, um, it's, it's about how I believe that uh, things in the universe kind of work. They're, you know, it's all made in the universe. That it all kind of, um, you know, happens for a reason. And um, just kind of letting yourself, you know, how should, it's cool. so hard to explain because you have to really listen to the uh, lyrics in that song. Well, everything's related. Yeah, everything everything's is related and then... Connected. Um, yeah, it's about like... You know, connection, cosmic connection. That's awesome. I totally, cosmic connection, I like that. Yeah, there you go. There totally is a cosmic connection. I just have yeah. to say, because I know, I mean, so many times there's been moments where you think of somebody and they get your thought and then 
you talk to yeah. each other when it, maybe you haven't talked to them for years, right? Like yeah. how many times have you heard stories like that? So yeah, there's definitely a connection. So yeah, so but the music video will have a lot of that. You really, know, the lighting and yeah. you know. I gotta cool. say it's sad because I'm with her in a band, but she, uh, she's got to be one of the best lyricists I've ever seen. Because oh, I, I read through you. the lyrics once, because I, I, I hear them, but mm -hmm. I don't focus on them. He's the only on one them. who listens to my lyrics. <laughs> <and I'm just laughs> especially as a foreigner, I need to hear it and it's read it to, to understand <laughs> it, right? And she has a really interesting way of pronouncing things. That's the first thing, actually, that I thought is unique about the band. Cause I'm like, I'm wondering if she speaks with an accent, because she's not from here originally, and mm -hmm. she doesn't. But the way she sings, it's kind of, it doesn't, it's not really clear. You, 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 you would say that's the word you think it is, but the way, it's almost like a, when you play guitar and you put distortion or some effect, like you get that sound, but it's now a little bit deviant and strange and, yeah. you know, distorted. Well, so yeah, when she obvious. says stuff, I think what he means obvious. is, like for me, like one of my favorite singers is Ronnie James Dio, and he really like, you know, every word is full of meaning. So in, to me, I really try to make a word kind of sound like its meaning. So maybe sometimes it kind of warps or something. Yeah. But I guess that's where I'm going. It's like opera, opera part, singing, too. rock singing. I'm definitely not an opera I singer. I know. It, just, it reminds I me of that. <laughs> I wish I could. I mean, I don't know. It's totally different. Nah. But yeah, it's very different. Do you think it's going to help us that we have a female uh, front? Uh, well, well I think so. I mean, we should, well, probably have a, <laughs> we should have a female bass player. Too, I think it's right? awesome. Because I was like, <laughs> should I well, go that extra step? Is that like <laughs> well, I mean, in, uh, I know that there's a lot of female empowerment movement sort of yeah. going on here, at least in the United States and especially in Los Angeles. We're really, really interested in helping women to come out and like, you know, follow their, their dreams in the entertainment industry, more musicians, more producers, more directors, more you know, involvement. So right. that's something that's yeah. really cool. So I think it's, I think people are going to dig it. And I think cool. you guys have an amazing band. We actually are going to have to cut to a commercial break. And when you come back, you guys are going to get to see them play live. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. And here we are with the band Edge of Paradise. And I'm here with the singer Margarita Monet. What song are you guys going to sing for us? Thank you for having us. We're going to do Face of Fear and the Live. Okay, awesome. Rock out.
with Tony the Movie Guy who's here to tell us about the movies that have been coming out this week and coming up next week as well. Hi, how are you Kimberly? I'm doing fine, how are you? I'm good, let's talk movies. Can you believe it, we're already into November. I know, this it's kind of crazy. almost over, it's crazy. So there's a couple of fun movies coming out this week. We've got Nobody's Fall, which is a, a comedy with Tiffany Haddish. She's like the it girl right now. Uh, and it's well deserved, she's hilarious. It's, uh, this film's written and directed by Tyler Perry. Uh, it looks fun, I'll watch it for her. She's very funny. She really is. Then we have a big family friendly film uh, called The Grinch with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch voicing The Grinch. Uh, it's from Illumination Studios who does Despicable 
for me. You would looks, be so good as the Grinch. Oh, have you not seen the trailers? Uh, oh, they look super fun. Awesome. So that's going to be, that's probably going to stay in theaters for a while through like the whole holiday Christmas season. Um, that's coming out. That's for the family. Then we have The Girl in the Spider's Web. Did you see The Girl in the Dragon Tattoo? Yes. Okay, so this is another one of those books adapted okay. into the film, but it's um, Claire Foy as Lisbeth Sander. Um, I don't know if you, Claire, if you know Claire Foy. She's the lady who did The Crown, playing the Queen. Wow. So it's odd casting, because uh, Lisbeth uh, Salander, sorry, that's the character's name. She's covered in tattoos. tattoos. She's a total badass. It's very opposite of her other characters. It really is. So yeah. I I'm a bit on the fence, but I love her as an actress. And the trailer looks uh, pretty action-packed and good. Cool. So that's The Girl in the Spider's Web also coming out. And then The Outlaw King. This is a film I'm really excited for. This is with uh, Chris Pine playing Robert the Bruce. Have oh, you seen Braveheart? Oh my God, yes. That's one of my favorite movies this of is all time. basically the unauthorized sequel to Braveheart. Because it's what happens with Robert the Bruce, Bruce as totally he watching this in the frees movie Scotland. That's um, so cool. The trailer looks fantastic. It's a big film production and it's getting a Netflix release. Nice. Um, but I'm actually excited for that film. Okay, and then the last one coming out in the theaters. Uh, this film looks really ridiculous and over the top. It's from J.J. Uh, Abrams, executive producing. It's called Overlord. Does it have lots of explosions? It's a crazy, like, looking war horry, horror zombie movie. Nice. Uh, it's actually got really good reviews, but that comes out as well. Just um, in time for Thanksgiving. That's right, yeah. So that's all the uh, major releases to the cinema. And then uh, one of the guests that you've had on your show, and I've mm -hmm. had on my podcast, so I'm going to mention that. Yes. Coming to Blu-ray, Anthony Ferrante, who directed The Last Shot. NATO, it's about time to so check go. that out. It's coming out on DVD and Blu ray. Awesome. That's what I've got. Thanks so much, Tony. Always a pleasure, never a chore. <laughs>